It was a spooky start to the game if you're an Avalanche fan. Tampa Bay Lightning wrote a dominant start to a victory, and we're here to break it down on Locked On Lightning. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Lightning your first listen every day. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And if your team is the Tampa Bay Lightning, then this is the show for you. Josh Sperber here talking about the Lightning with a dominant victory over the Colorado Avalanche. And before we get started, today's episode is presented by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. And the Lightning got started very quickly against the Colorado Avalanche. Three goals in the first five and a half minutes. The fifth fastest the Lightning have ever gotten to three goals to start a game in franchise history. Nikita Kucherov with the early goal and then a spectacular assist to Jake Gensel, who ended up with two. And Connor Geeky got one. I mean, the whole team just got involved. Geeky combining with the rest of that second line on one of the best link-up passing plays the Lightning have had all season. Um, it, it was truly a masterclass. I mean, Geeky to Hagel to Sorelli, back to Geeky on a three-on-one. Just, I mean, that pretty much sealed the deal. It was difficult for the Avs to come back after that, especially with Andre Vasilevsky making some absolutely incredible saves. And we'll talk about Geeky more in the next segment, but he is really starting to to round into form and turning into the player that many expected him to be. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next segment. But Andre Vasilevsky making just some some great saves. It really seems like he's started a to get back to the Vasilevsky that that everyone has known and loved over the past couple of years. Just some really quick reflex saves, great positioning, and the Avalanche really had to work for goals to get by it. This is the third straight game that the Lightning won, but also the third straight game they have been outshot. 14 more shots from the Avalanche to uh, as compared to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Vasilevsky with 33 saves. And the Avalanche with Kakinen making 16 saves for, for the game. I mean, Vasilevsky doubling up saves on his opponent, uh, his opposing goalie. And it, it's not like he was making some easy ones, too. I mean, you know, he made the easy ones, but the Avalanche had two goals that were just really difficult for any goalie to stop. A top-shelf screened goal. Uh, another top shelf in close off a rebound, I believe. I mean, th- those aren't goals you're gonna you're gonna stop most times, and y- you really you really have to tip your cap to to Vasilevsky because he he did he did everything the Lightning asked tonight. He was just he was great. Um, you know, really really solid performance from Andre Vasilevsky, letting up just two goals, two really difficult goals with the Avalanche getting one on the power play and then another really tough shot to go in. And you got to you gotta be pleased with, with the way the Lightning defense is played, especially with the injury to Eric Cernak. That's another thing we'll discuss a little bit later. It might cause some movement in the Lightning defensive lines, but um, I think the Lightning showed that whoever was in the game was able to defend well. The attackers came back. They pressed evenly. And it really took advantage of some early avalanche mistakes uh, in in the victory. And in in the podcast yesterday, we talked about the debate between Kucherov and McKinnon. Both of them really showed out tonight. McKinnon had assists on both of the goals, and Kucherov had his 92nd career three-point game, tied for third most in the NHL since his debut in 2013 with Leon Drysdale 
of the Oilers. And McDavid and Sidney Crosby are the only two with more. Kucherov with his most points in his first 10 games of the season. And I, I really think he's doing exactly what you'd expect and what you'd hope for a guy like Kucherov to do following the departure of a star player. You know, the, the assist numbers are still impressive for Kucherov so far, but the goals this early on have really been what what have Im Im impressed me. I mean, it's not that he's not a goal scorer, um, but, you know, he, he last year was really a guy just kind of spreading the – spreading the puck around and you know he he would put his goals in when he had his chances but you can tell that there's more onus on him to score now you can tell that there is just more that he wants to do on the offensive side of the puck he really takes the matters he takes matters into his own hands and seems to score goals whenever the lightning need it and that's exactly what you expect from the new offensive centerpiece of your team. And honestly, you could argue that he was that last year as well with his 100 assists. And Kucherov is a guy who's going to touch the puck at least once on just about every possession where his line is on. And most of the times he's going to turn those touches into goals, into shots, just into positive offensive play. And you just have to love what you're seeing from Nikita Kucherov so far. And it it is just continuing to add fuel to the fire that he's going to be a Hart Trophy candidate this year. And honestly, the, the better the Lightning do, the more wins that, that, that they get as a team, you know, you want to have the Hart Trophy player, the, the MVP, on a winning team. And I think the Lightning are really starting to follow suit. I think as a team – they're really gelling. The defense looked really solid tonight. Offense moved the puck around so well. And Nikita Kucherov has uh, had a big hand in that. Um, tonight, throughout the whole season, any way you slice it, Nikita Kucherov has been exactly what you'd expected more from a star player for the Tampa Bay Lightning this season. And you, it, he's someone who deserves you know, a lot of praise for that strong performance. And Jake Gensel getting his first for his first multi-goal game as a bull. And Nikita Kucherov has been the dish man on all four of them. And that is just another reason why Kucherov has been such a key part of this team offensively, just getting everyone involved, getting Gensel involved. And, um, you know, a lot of these goals for Gensel are positioning goals, too. I mean, him just putting himself in the right spot. That first goal that he had right in the first period, Nikita Kucherov making that acrobatic pass from behind the net, Gensel just a tap-in. I mean, makes it making it look so easy. And he's shown what an intelligent player he is. He gets to the right spots on the ice and makes it look easy because his positioning is so good. And I think that's just learning of, of how to play the right way on, on different lines. You know, the I think that's the key thing that you need when you've moved around so much. I mean, this is Gensel's third team in a year. He was traded from the Penguins to the Hurricanes in March, and now he's with the Lightning in October. So to succeed as, Gun as Gensel has on multiple lines – you have to be able to put yourself in the right position. And Gensel has absolutely done that. His passing has shown out, and he's shown the ability to put the puck in the back of the net too. And I really like what I'm seeing to start things off for Jake Gensel. And the same is true for Connor Geeky, the rookie sensation for the Lightning, who scored his first career goal uh, about a week ago on Saturday. And in the last couple of games, he has put himself on the board with a couple of goals and an assist as well. And a lot of the Lightning players, a lot of the Lightning coaches expect Connor Geeky to be a future star in this NHL. How soon can that be? From the way things have been going lately, it seems like that can be pretty darn soon. We'll take a look at that when we return here on Locked on Lightning. A little while ago, I had the pleasure of going to a chiropractor called The Joint in Clearwater, one of their 23 locations in the Tampa Bay area. And I have had back problems for a while. 
And I have never gone to a chiropractor before. Didn't really know what to expect, but the the people at the joint were so friendly and they were so helpful from the get go. Um, they really made the whole process easy for me and kind of stepped me through it in in a simple way. They started off by just diagnosing what was wrong, um, did a couple of stretches of their own, then they told me uh, a bunch of stretches that I could do on my own to. Uh, keep my back pain away. And that stretching program is still working for me today. So the joint chiropractic is certainly a place that I would recommend if you have pain. Um, for me, it was my back. It, it, it could be anywhere. I mean, they, they have a very knowledgeable staff that can help you eliminate the pain wherever it is on your body. And you can get your first visit for $19. Go to Buccaneers.com, fans, contests, and promotions, and go on to, the, to one of the 23 Tampa Bay locations that the joint has. And it is certainly a place that I can recommend. We're back here on Locked On Lightning talking about one of the young stars of the Bolts, Connor Geeky, who has already stepped up in his First professional season, part of the Mikhail Sergachev trade over the summer. He's played in all 10 games for the Lightning this season. Has already earned himself a promotion. Started the season on line three, and since going up to line two a little over a week ago, he has two goals and an assist, including a just spectacular link-up play between that entire third line on a breakaway. We, we mentioned it before. Geeky, a dish to Hagel, who dished to Sorelli, had an open lane back at Geeky. The goaltender was moved to the other side of the net. Geeky had an open net, and he stuck it home. Almost had two goals in that game against the Capitals, where he scored his first NHL goal and undoubtedly got that puck. But the 6'4", 20-year-old is really starting to adjust to the league. Now, you never really can get a timeline for how quickly these rookies – can't adjust to playing in the NHL. And Connor Geeky seems to have gotten there pretty quickly. Even before he was starting to put pucks in the net, he was a he was always a factor on the offensive side of things. Doesn't shy away from, from contact, not afraid to, to mix it up. Um, and his, his offensive skills have, have been there. You could tell that he, you know, could face off. You know, he he had that ability. We saw that in preseason, but once it came to the regular season, he was on the wing. Not his regular position, but he adapted. Um, and the last couple of games, he's really started to to put to to put the puck in the net and make some, you know, more obvious contributions to the lightning offense that started to show up on the stat sheet. And I don't think it was ever a question of if geeky will be a star but when and that question is one that has been rattling through my mind um a lot over the past over the past couple of weeks as geeky has really started to round into form i mean you can tell that he's getting a lot more comfortable on the ice and i think that the move bumping him to the second line was it was just genius i mean it, it's really it's really paid off in a big way and you can absolutely tell. I mean, having Sorelli and Hagel on there, uh, serving him the puck. You know, both of them are such solid passers, and you know they're both they're both guys who've who've been around. They've been in Geeky's shoes. They have been the young player trying to to work their way up on the Lightning roster. And I, it really seems like they've taken Geeky under their wing. He's talked in press conferences about, about how much he loves playing with those guys specifically and how much help that they have given him as he starts his NHL career. And um, you can tell that the chemistry is just off the charts on that, on that third line, uh, on that second line. And, you know, moving Nick Paul down really hasn't, hasn't, detracted from anything i mean he's a guy who can play with anyone he's been on this team long enough that and he's been around the nhl long enough that he can he can adjust really quickly and it you know the 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 change in Connor geeky's play since moving to that second line has been spectacular and nick paul has continued to be just an an, an absolute force for the lightning 
Uh, his point streak may have ended, didn't get a goal or assist, but a plus one. And and Geeky with that big goal for for Tampa. So it, it looks like that line change was smart. And if, if the Lightning fir- first line wasn't so set, it would seem like a matter of time before Geeky can get up on that first line. He's played on both wings. He's played in the center between the preseason and the regular season with Tampa. So he could play anywhere. And, you know, you don't want to move Gensel down or point. Obviously, Kucherov's spot on that first line is pretty much set in stone. So, you know, not a lot of room for Geeky on there. But, I mean, you can you can see that. I mean, you could see Geeky being a top-line player. That is absolutely the kind of the kind of projections you can have for a player like that. You know, it might not be in the next few years because that top line for Tampa is, is relatively young. You know, uh, Nikita Kucherov is 31. Braid, uh, Jake Gensel is 30. And Braden Point is also, is also in his prime as, you know, been one of the best, goal scorers on the team the last couple of years at 28 years old. And, you know, that that's, that could be the first line for the next couple of years. Absolutely. But you could also easily envision John Cooper just playing around with those lines, maybe moving Gensel down one just to get him more experience with some other guys, maybe move, point down one to see how geeky does it center out on the top line. I mean, you've got those kind of options and I'm not saying that that's going to happen yet. I would be shocked if I saw geeky move from the second line before 2025 because of how strong he has played there. And, but I mean, I think the eventual goal with a player like geeky with a, you know, a rookie that the lightning just essentially traded for and brought right into the NHL you want to you'd want to see him on the top line at some point in his Bolts career and i think that is definitely a possibility he has shown a knack for goal scoring to to put himself in the right positions no matter where he is on the ice and within the first 10 games of his nhl career he has played left wing right wing and center and you know that might be a little bit more common nowadays but it's still it's still not an easy feat a young guy already adjusting to a new team adjusting to different positions on the ice on a relatively frequent basis. And it's, it's, I think it's, it's good for his development, being able to play in so many different situations already playing with two different lines on the lightning team, already moving up a line on the lightning team. And it just shows that he is, he's earned it. You know, there, there were questions about that Sergachev trade and it's really starting to seem like they've been answered. JJ Moser has been excellent on defense and Connor Geeky is really turning into a, a top-class rookie. Um, I think the Calder Trophy is certainly an option for him. A uh, little too early to, to tell on that, but I, I'd, I'd say that I, I'd, I'd, I'd wager that he'd be one of the finalists for the Calder Trophy at the end of the year. I think he is really turning into that player, and obviously that's not going to be decided in the first 10 games. I mean, he's not the only – rookie adjusting to life in the NHL. And I think that he's made a strong adjustment and could turn into a really solid two-way forward um, in his NHL career. He's got the the size, the physicality uh, to play on defense, and the offensive skills are certainly there. I mean, he is he has just looked so strong, especially on the offensive side of the puck. And I think it's a matter of time before he turns into – an elite player in the NHL. I think in five years, you'll be talking about Connor Geeky as, you know, one of the, one of the young faces of the NHL, one of the young stars of the league. And it, it started here in Tampa and it, it is been exemplified just game in and game out. And you really have to give Geeky a lot of credit for, you know, just grinding and working. I mean, it wasn't even a guarantee that he'd make the opening day roster. I know I even said that I thought he'd start in the AHL for a little bit as the Lightning kind of got started, but they pushed him um, and he has responded incredibly well. So I think that Connor Geeky can certainly end the season as one of the league's top rookies, if not the league's top rookie. And in the long, long run, uh, as depending on how healthy he stays and 
and you know all the the little things like that. I think that he could end his career as one of the league's best players as well. I think he is certainly that talented. Another talented player that we have to focus on for unfortunate reasons is Eric Chernak. Took a high hit in the second period and could miss some time. Lightning are hoping to have him back for the wild game, but we'll see how much that could change the Lightning lineup with a Cernak injury. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in over 30 states, including the great state of Florida, as well as California, Georgia, and Texas. And you can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy so that your lineup stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Prize Picks keeps your lineup live. It's the best place to get real money sports action. So join over 10 million users and sign up today. And when you sign up to Prize Picks today, you get $50 instantly when you play just five. You don't even have to win to receive the $50 bonus, it's guaranteed. Prize Picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Every Tuesday, Prize Picks offers select discounts on player projections up to 25% to provide even more value for your lineups. And you can download the Prize Picks app today. Use the code Locked On NHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineups. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code Locked On NHL, L O C K E D O N N H L. To get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup, Prize Picks run your game. Our last segment, we're going to talk about an injury, and it's one of the first in season injuries for the Tampa Bay Lightning. They had a couple players out at the start of the year. Luke Glenn Dinning was questionable for the first night of the season, though he still played every game this year. Michael Icymont got back from the injury list earlier than expected and you know a couple of the lightning young players on the list but it has been a clean bill of health so far for the Tampa Bay Lightning unfortunately that streak may end as Eric Cernak's status is up in the air for Friday's game against the Minnesota Wild we'll talk about that one in tomorrow's show but tonight we'll see how things can change in the lightning lineup with the potential injury to Eric Cernak. It is not official. That It's not known if he is going to play yet on Friday. Uh, John Cooper, the head coach for the Lightning, did not comment on the status. There was no update on the injury at the time of the postgame press conference last night. But, um, you know, anytime a player leaves early from a game, it is, it's going to put you through the paces and it is going to, uh, going to potentially change the strategy. And the Lightning have been using seven defenders this season. Darren Radish and Nick Perbix have been kind of switching in and out of that third line. And it's really going to be the first time the Lightning have any difference on that first or second defensive line. It's been Ryan McDonough and Cernak all year, that same pair that helped the Lightning win those two Stanley Cups. And I think if an injury was going to happen to any line, um, might as the the second one might have been the easiest to adjust to. It could have been the third. You could also say the third line because they've been using three defenders on there. Lilleberg has played, um, you know, full games with both Nick Perbix and Darren Radish, and it'll be one of them, likely Perbix, uh, jumping up to that second line. But. Uh, I think having McDonough there, a guy who has you know been one of the longest tenured NHL players on the Tampa Bay Lightning team, having him already with his experience on that second line, uh, I think is is it's going to make the adjustment a bit easier. I mean, the Lightning are not the only team that McDonough has played for. Obviously, the 35 year old has been in the league since 2010, played for three teams, two stints with the Lightning 
in which he's in the middle of his second two years with the Nashville Predators after beginning the first eight seasons of his career or the first seven seasons of his career with the New York Rangers, making it to a Stanley Cup with them. And guys who have been in the league as long as McDonough have, as long as McDonough has, have the ability to just adjust. I mean, they he's been there and seen it all in in the NHL. He's been a Stanley Cups as a champion and a runner up. Um, he has you know, he, he's been there and done just about everything you can think of in, in the NHL. So I think he'll be able to adjust to his new teammate. It'll be someone who's been on the Lightning for, you know, a significant amount of time in Perbix or, or Radish that will be playing with Ryan McDonough. And I think it'll be, it'll be good to have one of those, you know, younger defenders with a vet like McDonough, just kind of helping them on that on that advanced line. And I, I don't think it's going to be a huge effect on the lightning if he doesn't stay out that long, obviously keeping him out for a while just kind of hurts the depth of the team. I mean, just being able to rotate in Perbix and Radish, give Lilleberg a break every so often, um, you know, it helps keep the guys fresh. It helps keep everyone in shape and healthy. And I think long term, like the longer Cernak stays out, the worse effect it's going to have on the Lightning, as I think you'd say with any injury. But I mean, if it's if it's not a if if he's not out for too long, I, it'll be it, it. I don't think it'll be noticed all that much. And I don't want to say that as a knock on Cernak. He has continued to prove himself to be a solid, solid defender and just, you know, just a rock for the Lightning on that second line. But um, I think that, you know, obviously we're, we're all hoping that he is he is not out for too long, but I think it, it, it can be a pretty easy adjustment for the Lightning just because they have had three different defenders play. Just, be, you know, now Perbix can, can play with someone that he's known for a bit longer. You know, Radish can, can play up um, like I think he is – kind of starting to to round into just both of those guys are you know are, are trying to get to 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 higher lines and trying to get more playing time and radish has, has had some time on the power play too 28 year old undrafted free agent and Nick Perbix 26 years old in his third season with the lightning radish is in his fifth season with the lightning I mean these are you know guys that are really starting to establish themselves as as pros. And I think it's a good opportunity for either one of them to play with a guy like McDonough who has been in the league for, you know, 14, 15 years. And I think that could, could help them. Um, it could help, you know, give the Cooper another chance to, to see what he has in, in Perbix or in, in Radish and even, you know, regardless of who is who's up on the second line, who is going to stay down on the third line, um, I think that they could they could benefit like this. It's a chance for them to really cement themselves as part of this Lightning rotation, and it, it's it's a test for the Lightning defense. You know, they they've been challenged at times when they've been at full strength, and now the depth isn't isn't going to be there as it has been for most of the season. So I think it's a challenge to just prove how strong just the simple six players on lightning defense are. I mean, losing one of your key defenders, losing one of your longest tenured guys can hurt, but it's a chance for Radish and Perbix to step up and really cement themselves as part of this lightning defensive rotation. And I'm curious to see who is going to get bumped up the line. I'm curious. I Again, Perbix has played – in one more game than Radish, so I'd imagine that he is going to get that bump. But I'm I'm curious to see how they respond to it because you know they'll be competing for that you know that final spot on the third line when Cernak is back, and this could be an opportunity for one of them to really distance themselves from the other in the Lightning defensive rotation. So I'm curious to see who seizes that chance on Friday against the Wild. But we'll talk about that game tomorrow for tonight. We will finish up and thank all of you 
for tuning in to Locked On Lightning and making Locked On Lightning your first listen today. Now for your second listen, make sure to check out Locked On Fantasy Hockey and become a fantasy hockey expert to get the edge over your league mates with daily tips from Steel and Flip. Find Locked On Fantasy Hockey on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Make sure to give us a like, a follow, a subscribe, no matter where you're you're listening from. If you're watching on YouTube, we appreciate your support and would love a like, a follow, or a subscription for extra support because we do this podcast for you, the Lightning fan. So to the greatest fan base in hockey, thank you all for tuning in to today's episode of Locked on Lightning. I'm Josh Sperber, and we'll talk tomorrow. Go Bolts, and have a great Thursday.